When I first had my 40 hour week job, like most everyone does, I was an amateur and a hobbyist and I kept going down to our local photographers to find out what I could from them. And to be honest, they didn't want to tell me much because it was a small community and they had the knowledge that I wanted and they were afraid I was going to be a competitor of theirs. And that's what I was trying to do was to gain knowledge from the local photographers to be a competitor so I could do photography. And they just didn't want to hand out that information. It took me a long time to break into wedding photography. The program we're going to go through is how we started from scratch again here in Colorado and changed things to get built up quick so we could have a reputation and get a lot of weddings. We look on the calendar, the date's open, so we're happy for them. We say, you know what, the other Saturdays are filled, but we've got one opening left on that date and it's in your time. And here's kind of a trick that we use because brides and grooms, I don't think that they like little add-on stuff. So we don't have any mileage. We don't have any add-on fees. We can, on our price list, we can give them right down to the 25 cents or 75 cents, what it's gonna cost for their wedding, no add-ons. We'll turn your shoulder out, there you go. Fellas, hands at side I think look real nice. Other than that, we're all set, guys. Focusing everybody, we're gonna shoot several real quick here. We'll keep everybody right where you're at. Uh oh, we got problems over here. A couple of cannas there for you guys. Bugs down the shirt or something like that. Uh oh. That's a Kodak moment. Oh, that's what we want right there. Very good. I want copy that. They're getting all the negatives. Print whatever you want to. Crisis is over. We're going to line you back up, shoot real quick. Ladies, we're going to scoot you a tiny bit. If possible, we're going to switch so we have alternating bridesmaid groomsmen. We'll switch you first, ladies. And then with this setup, let's keep you how we are then real quick. Is that all right? And you heard that, we're going to add in a couple of family members, parents. Can you hook your arm through Jason's there? I like that right there. Ladies, very good. Go ahead, shoot right next to me. That's fine, guys. We're getting in real close there, guys. Perfect right there, guys. Let me get down low here, you guys. We're focusing. I like it right here, guys. But I'm going to get low so my flash doesn't hit that. Okay. Little readjustment here. That looks real good, Dad. Okay, guys. Focusing here. We can do one fun one and just after this shot here. Focusing on you guys. Just idea. Jason, Rachel kissing. We don't have to. Everybody else kind of hooting and hollering. Kind of a fun one. You guys got to get excited. Woo ah, very good, you guys. I think we, you guys can go inside if you want. We're going to do a few couple things here. All right. We're going to do that couple stuff later. Okay. So. Whatever they want. Do a few shots of the cake here by itself. Usually ask for a bride and groom to set their bouquet next to it. Really spices it up a lot. Just move these a little bit here. They're waiting on me here, so I'm going to shoot quick. One more shot here. Moving back. We got her. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to take over for Aaron, since there's two of us at this wedding. We usually don't do it this way because there's usually one of us here. But I'm just getting my camera turned on, so I'm turning on my turbo battery, it's up. The quantum strobe is turned on. We do have film in the camera. I always check that before. I'm going to turn the camera on. Now we're motor drive loading the camera. So the camera's going in. We're going to shoot at F4 in here. Aaron informed me that's been doing good for him. 
160. We're shooting at uh, F4, the strobe set at F4, and we're gonna go do some table shots and get what other shots we need here as the night proceeds. So Ron's just gonna follow me, so here we go. What you're looking at now is our price list. It is so distinct from everybody else's. You'll see price lists. You should go, go to the area photographers and get price lists from them. You'll see where they've copied them on photocopiers and they look bad and there's no photos on them. And some of them are trifold, some double fold. Some of them have so much writing you can't figure out what's what. And some of them are two or three pages stapled together. And we're going to overshoot, of course. So we have these handy boxes. If they're supposed to get 120 photos in their album, we put 120 in there, and we may use several boxes. If if the uh, out of the uh, if we shoot 200 photographs, let me say it that way, and 120 of them go in the album, we put the other 80 in boxes like this. And when we ship it to them, we seal everything up in plastic, so they would get this plus the album and as many of these boxes as they need. Continuing uh, with the, uh, this is very important, so I'm going to hit it again. The continuous photographic coverage. We want to make sure that we're there at the proper time and that we leave at the proper time so they don't try and, and have us sit down and relax uh, during their meal. So they need to know that when we start at uh, 2 in the afternoon and we're quitting at 6 at night, that that's the way it is. And this is a contract. I'm jumping a little ahead here. But again, it's like our lead sheet. Photographer will meet you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, at a certain time and a certain location to start the wedding. And the photographer must leave at, say in this case, 6 p.m., even if the wedding starts late. Oh. Well, this is a digital Nikon that we shoot. You can push down there and it, it'll focus. Take a picture of your wife there. Let me, there you go. And, yeah. <laughs> She's in close. I think it's set on program. Now it should come up right here. There it is. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. What you're going to see now is our album filled with original colored photographs and we mix black and white in with these colors. This is what they call a preview album. We call it our original album or the basic album. We're also going to show you two custom albums with 8x10 colored photographs in them. We show them this one first because it's smaller and not quite as impressive as the others are. So the outside can be black, it can be blue, it can be leather looking tan. There's a lot of colors that you can get on the outside and we just happen to have it in black. So I'm going to open it up here and the first thing you're going to see is that we have our logo printed in the lower bottom of the inside front cover. This is so they can always remember who we are and know where to get in touch with us. It has our names and our 800 number on it. Then we have a page protector and sometimes we leave it in and sometimes we take it out but today it happens to be in. We start off with the first two photographs in the album uh, of a real pretty scene of the wedding. We don't necessarily put the first two photos in are not necessarily the first two we take at the wedding because this wedding was at a church and after we left the church and did the formals and we're headed back to the reception hall, we stopped at a lake and did these photographs. But this is a good way to, to do it. I put the two pretty photographs in there from the lake shot so when they opened it up it's like wow this is great and as soon as we turn the page we're going to go right to the wedding photographs where we started uh, photographing at the lodge. What we have here is our wedding lead sheet and our wedding contract that the bride and groom are going to going to uh, sign for us. So the wedding lead sheets in yellow remember that so it'll stand out and our wedding contract is in white and we have uh, carbonless copies, a pink one, a yellow one, and a white one. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead here. They want to book us either uh, over the phone. Uh, we've got their information here. We write it down on here, their credit card and everything, so we can transfer it over to the credit card machine and run it. So if the bride and groom want to book us over the telephone, we have our wedding lead sheet, and we filled it all out down here and got their credit card number and then we can go ahead and fill out the contract and mail it to them. Sometimes we'll send them the price list. They'll get the price list, call back and want to book us. So what we do when they want to book us over the phone, we'll fill this information out right here and this information, make sure it's correct and get their credit card number down and run their credit card. We have a machine here in the office and if we don't have the machine, 
I'm sorry, if we don't have the card, we write by telephone on it and just fill out with a ballpoint pen. Instead of getting an impression of the card, we just fill it out with the numbers and stuff and it's worked fine for us. The people don't live there or there's no such address. So that's very important. I also want to mention that all our forms we're going over today, you'll be able to download those off the CD and use them and just put your name and address on them and hopefully you'll change the logo so it won't be our mountains or our style of writing. But our price lists and all these forms, just change them to suit you. That'll save you a lot of time and money. We're to the point now where you're going to have to do some, some business preparation. So you're going to have to get a, a sales tax with the state that you're in because here in Colorado, if it's labor, you don't have to tax it. But if it's product, you do have to tax it. The circuit board was gone. But what happened there, Aaron was right there. So I said, Aaron, I'm dead. I'm, I'm down. And he just stepped in and kept photographing and never missed a shot. But if I hadn't had Aaron there, I would have missed some shots because what I did, I had my backup equipment in the car and that's too far away. So you want to take your backup equipment in with you. If you're photographing in a metro area and it's a reception, say, and you go in a hotel and you go up to the 12th floor and down the hall, uh, you want to have all your primary equipment there plus your backup equipment. So if something goes down in your primary equipment, you can walk 30, 40 feet, get your other cameras out, and keep going just like that. You see here these backs come off here, and you can have film, black and white, loaded in one color in the other. Pop these off and switch them out really quickly if you're shooting black and white alongside with your color stuff. One other feature I'd like to mention on this 645 AFD is you can change these lenses out here. We have telephoto lens, we have wide angle lens for it. They are all autofocus 2.8 for their aperture, which gives you a lot of light in there. Um, one other feature is our pull out battery pack. Same as the F5, real nice, because if you're shooting weddings and you only have a couple of the rechargeable batteries, you might get yourself in trouble at a wedding. And this does fit the AA batteries. You can buy these clips extra for this camera. We have several of them for each camera. We keep fresh batteries loaded in them at all times. In case the bride and groom are starting to walk down the aisle, your batteries go dead. You don't have to put the individual in here. There's quite a few of them. You can just open up your bag and switch these out, pop it in there, and you're set to go. One last piece of equipment here that's real important when we keep this around our neck at all times when we're shooting at weddings, and it's a light meter here. And this is a multi-purpose light meter where you can Use this little dome here for your ambient light meter readings. Uh, if you go in the church, it's too late to go up there. If you have to set up on a tripod, if it's an available light situation only in a church where during the ceremony you have to shoot available light only, and maybe you got there and the ceremony's going, you never know what you're going to run into at a wedding. And this, this is real important. What you can do is switch it over to your zoom spot meter. Look through here. There's a little circle on there. You push the button on a neutral gray area in the back of the church, you get that meter reading without even going up there, and that's a real nice feature. The, an assistant can help spread the bride's gown out. Aaron and I do that ourselves. Once in a while, the maid of honor or someone, the mothers jump in and help you do it, and we really appreciate that. So an assistant can be really valuable to you. An assistant can also come along for a year and watch what you do, and then be your competitor the next year. So you want to watch who you hire, and if you hire somebody as an assistant, I would suggest you get a, a contract written up that they won't photograph within 100 miles of your town for three years or something of this fashion, because they're going to be learning photography at these weddings from you. I have some miscellaneous stuff I want to mention at this point. That uh, our way is not the only way, but this, what's, was, this is what works for Aaron and I and sets us totally apart from all the photographers in our area and we make more profit on our weddings the way we do it. I really believe we do.